example of this is, I mean, I, I'm not in favor of no immigration. I'm in favor of caution and of being careful. And one of the reasons of that, of that is because I see a lot of unexpected consequences. Let me give you one obvious example of the country that Majid just mentioned. Um, Denmark, like most of Europe, had post-war immigration policies that basically invited guest workers in, and then the guest workers stayed, which they hadn't expected, and then various other things happened. Now, nobody was talking about Islam in this period. I mean, it wasn't in Britain until the Satanic Verses affair in 1989 when the fatwa was imposed on a British novelist by the Ayatollah that we started talking about Islam in Britain, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in, in Denmark, it didn't happen until 2005 when one newspaper, one newspaper editor, the editor of the culture section of Jyllands Posten, discovered that in a set of children's books about the great religions, they couldn't find anyone to illustrate the one on the Islam because nobody was willing to draw pictures of Muhammad. And so this newspaper editor, the culture editor of the paper, commissioned 12 people who were prominent cartoonists in Denmark to do cartoons of Muhammad. Some of them did, some of them didn't. Some of them did ones that were saying the paper's provocative and unnecessarily provoking Muslims. Um, on the back of that, of course, there were riots all over uh, the Muslim world. Uh, um, uh, quite a lot of people were killed. There were burnings of the Danish embassy and, and so on. And, you know, and I, I, I've, I got caught up in a little bit of that. And I was in Denmark for the, the 10th anniversary of the cartoons in 2015. And um, I was telling Majid about this yesterday. It, it was, uh, there had been an event on the 5th anniversary, but everyone who'd been at the 5th anniversary had been shot since the 5th anniversary. So it was hard to find people to speak at the 10th anniversary. Mm. And uh, I and a couple of friends uh, discovered we had headline billing, and it was only after realizing the situation with the fifth anniversary, we realized why we were so prominent. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, this... Uh, it's funnier, this story. Yeah, oh, yeah, but, oh, yeah no, 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 the funny detail was, yeah, I discovered afterwards that both the U.S. State Department and the British Foreign Office had told British and American nationals not to go anywhere near the Danish parliament or the center of Copenhagen on this day because of the possibility of an attack on our conference. And I was like, well, they didn't tell me that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you got killed, Douglas. That's yeah, right. probably. But anyhow, but, and, um, but the point is, is I, I, I mention this because I spoke to a, uh, a lot of MPs that day that was in the Danish parliament because it was the only building in Denmark that they could guarantee the safety of the audience in. Okay. Yeah. Just think about um, that for a minute, folks. Seriously. And, uh, and actually, um, uh, ISIS called for an attack on the conference, it turned out, that they couldn't get anyone there in time. And anyhow, I spoke to a lot of Danish MPs that day, and I remember one of them from the, the centre-right party said to me, I said, what's your view on immigration now? And, and she said, I don't want any more immigrants from the Muslim world. And I said, isn't that a bit, uh, you know, isn't that a bit simplistic and so on? And her response was, look, all the polling shows that... 99.5% of Muslims think that you shouldn't be allowed to publish cartoons of Muhammad. So for every 100 people we invite in, there'll be 99 or more who won't allow our free press to keep on operating in a free manner. So I'm not taking that risk. Now, you can decry that and disagree with it, but it's, it's an argument that's worth thinking about. I want to talk about a remarkable phenomenon that is going on in uh, Asia um, and Africa, namely the large-scale conversion of Muslims to Christianity. There was a complaint um, by a guy on Al Jazeera who said that by his count, six million Muslims are converting to Christianity each year. Christians have been saying two things. Number one, God is eternal. Eternal meaning not living forever, on and on and on. Eternal in the sense of outside of time. And this concept of eternity, which seemed, from a scientific point of view, incoherent, now makes complete sense. If God is outside the universe, he's outside of time. Far from being unable to escape God, there is a very real contingent of non-believers, and I would count myself among their number, who are unable by any means to discover him, who seek and do not find, who knock and receive, as it were, no answer. I think it would be great if God existed. I really do. I would, I would absolutely love to escape death. I would relish 
being the recipient of unconditional love. Less selfishly, I would love to be able to worship that which deserves to be worshipped. I just don't think it's true. Now try as I might, look where I can, I find no response, no hint, nothing.